Hello, my name is Dr. Anna Mihocha. I'm the president of AM Medical LLC. Today, I want to give you an update on our innovative peptide treatment program. I have recorded a previous episode that was giving you the outline of all of the areas that we can affect through peptides. Today, I'm going to go further into some novel peptides that have recently arrived and that we are now able to offer for our patients. The first area of peptides are the neurocognitive and neuroenhancing peptides. We do have now DSIP, Delta Sleep Inducing Peptide. This peptide has been researched for over 40 years and it has profound neuromodulatory effects. It has been used in alcohol and opiate withdrawals, as well as depression and other brain conditions. Most importantly, it's also been shown to work very well for people who have chronic insomnia or lack of sleep, and oftentimes works in people who've been on many tranquilizers, but no longer have any effects for their, from their medications. DSIP can be combined with epithalon, which is a peptide that lengthens your telomeres. When used in combination, there's a profound calming effect. Epithalon is a very happy feeling peptide because it affects the brain, it makes you younger, but it also um, allows for a very calming effect. So this combination uh, works well to help people rest well at night as well as enhance their brain function and modulate stress. When stress is downregulated, we're inhibiting the major uh, aspect that makes us age. The next peptide in the category of uh, neurocognitive enhancement is called FGL. This is a peptide that accesses receptors on the neurons and the glial cells on their membranes. And there it, it acts to enhance growth of neurons. So it can be used to enhance learning and memory. It's been used in Alzheimer's as well as other conditions like traumatic brain injury. In stroke patients that are suffering from ischemia, meaning the lack of blood flow to their brain tissue, it's been shown to be very helpful in neural regeneration. The next area of peptides are our weight loss peptides. As I told you in the previous video, we use peptides like CJC1295 with epimoralin, we have other oral weight loss peptides. I am very excited to be able to offer this particular peptide. It is called glyceric acid with amino filling. It is actually a cream that people apply to their abdomen. These two peptides have been shown to reduce abdominal fat in men and women after 12 weeks of use by an average of 11 centimeters or 4.4 inches. Now isn't that an easy way to lose weight to apply a cream to your abdomen? This is a great adjunct to our other weight loss modalities. The next peptide in the category of weight loss is called 5-amino-1-MQ. This peptide accesses the cellular energy metabolism. When given to mice, and these mice were fed an extremely high fat diet and high cholesterol diet, while these mice were on this extremely high fat diet, they were still losing weight and their cholesterol was lowered. So this peptide has been shown to augment weight loss substantially and help lower cholesterol numbers even if people have difficulty adhering to their healthy diet. 
The next peptide is called Ministerm. That peptide has been shown to lower cholesterol in people who need cholesterol lowering and it is a great um, alternative to statin drugs. It is usually given intravenously once a week and has had profound effects in lowering cholesterol. Of course we know that cholesterol is not the only factor that promotes cardiovascular disease but we have to address other things like inflammation and nutritional deficiencies. But if needed we do have an alternative to statin drugs to lower cholesterol. The next area is the anti-aging area and we have two absolutely novel and exciting peptide combinations that we're able to offer. The first one is called R3G with methylcobalamin and NAD. R3G is a peptide that is um, similar to Panax ginseng and that has been shown to have profound anti-inflammatory effects in the body as well as the brain. So when we decrease inflammation, again, we're accessing directly the mechanism of aging. So this peptide has been shown to have profound anti-aging effects, but because it, it accesses neuroinflammation and downregulates it, it can be used for things like Alzheimer's. It has been shown to be effective in diabetes as well as other conditions like arteriosclerosis. Again, because it downregulates multiple cytokines, those are signals that uh, upregulate inflammation. It is helpful in so many different conditions. It is also um, affecting cellular energy metabolism. And it's been now uh, studied in ovarian and prostate cancer. So we have a new uh, peptide in the anti-aging arena and this peptide is given intranasally. So for people who don't like injections but want to pursue the anti-aging peptides, this one is a great um, option. The next peptide in the anti-aging category is called NMN. This truly is a new and fantastic peptide. It upregulates the biosynthesis of NAD that then can convert into NADH. Nicotinamide is one of the um, substrates that are used in the mitochondria for energy production in the Krebs cycle. So basically we do have an access here that again accesses cellular metabolism of energy. We have a peptide here that is able to increase the particular components of energy production in the cell. So this peptide has profound anti-aging properties because if we can externally increase energy production in the cell, we can allow the cell to regenerate itself because it's, it can produce the electricity to do so. So this peptide has had effects in weight loss, in increasing insulin sensitivity. Again, it's used in anti-aging. And it is an amazing addition to our other peptides like epithalon that lengthens telomeres and mot c that uh, makes people resistant to metabolic stress so we now have a great repertoire of different access modalities in which we can reverse aging in a targeted fashion the next peptide is called kpv this peptide has profound anti-inflammatory properties. It has been studied in psoriasis and shown in people to be able to decrease redness, dryness, itching, 
and overall uh, rash amount in psoriasis. It has been also shown to work in other conditions like colon cancer, inflammatory bowel disease, all through downregulating inflammation. The next area of peptides are affecting the bones. We have MK677. MK677 is a derivative of insulin-like growth factor. It acts like it and it is similar to one of the peptides that I described in my first video, which is IGFLR3. MK677 can be utilized to improve bone strength for osteoporosis, and it also increases muscle mass. Dissimilar to IGFLR3, it does not cause weight loss, so it can be used in thin people who want to improve muscle mass and bone strength. The next peptide is pantosan polysulfate. This is a peptide used for osteoarthritis. It actually repairs the collagen matrix of the cartilage and it does decrease the decay of cartilage in arthritis. When people have utilized this in studies, the amounts of hyaluron, which is the compound that helps heal the cartilage and is produced in the fluid of the joints, has been increased significantly. So this peptide can be given as a subcutaneous injection twice a week for six weeks and has been shown to be helpful in relieving osteoarthritis pain and overall inflammation. PTD-DPM is a peptide that's been used to increase hair growth. So this can be for male baldness as well as female alopecia, meaning female hair loss. It is used topically and it's been very effective. It can be used with our other products, uh, as I described in my first video, um, that were also regarding skin wrinkles. We have GH Copper, which also promotes uh, hair growth. The next categories of peptides are our cancer peptides. I discussed in my first video metencephaline, which is an opioid receptor agonist, and that has amazing effects in multiple cancers. I'm very excited to be able to utilize PNC27. PNC27 accesses the cell membrane of cancer cells very specifically. In a normal cell, we have a regulator called P53, and that uh, regulator would allow a cell to die at an appropriate time. Cancer cells deactivate P53, and that's how they become immortal. PNC27 works by inhibiting the cancer's inhibition of P53. So now we have cancer cells that we can make die. And basically the way it works is that PNC27 punches holes in the cell membrane of cancer cells very specifically. It does not attack any type of healthy cells, which makes it very beneficial as compared to chemotherapy that also kills cancer cells but also normal healthy cells. PNC27 is very carefully used in low doses because in high doses it can potentially cause what's called tumor lysis, which is the rapid cell death of many cancer cells and that um, produces a, an effect where the electrolytes from the cells are released into the body. It's sort of like your body was overwhelmed with toxin and that can be dangerous. So with PNC27, we use extremely low doses. We also support our cancer patients by using high-dose vitamin C infusions, which in itself supports the immune system, 
but also helps to fight cancer cells. And we use hyperbaric oxygen because cancer cells do not like oxygen and in fact they do not thrive in it. So this combination therapy has been very useful for our cancer patients. PNC27 has been used in many cancers, including leukemia, melanoma, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer. There's a lot of information about PNC27 and it has been very effective. The next cancer peptide uh, is IRGD. This peptide, it acts in a way as an enhancer to be able to transport drugs into cancer cells specifically. So when this peptide is given in conjunction with chemotherapy, we can lower the dose substantially. It has been shown that cancer patients who use, for example, a chemotherapeutic drug like doxorubicin, if you give it together with this peptide, you can increase the um, concentration of the drug by 40 times in the cell. So when they have combined this peptide with the chemotherapy, they were able to decrease the cytotoxic drug dose by three times, which is significant because a lot of the chemotherapeutic agents, the higher the dosages are, the more toxicity there is for the surrounding healthy cells. So this is also an exciting new peptide for our um, cancer patients. There are new possibilities coming out every day. This concludes my update on peptides this time. There will be more updates coming. There's always new peptides coming out. We want you to know that we have access to many novel inventions and many novel treatments here at AM Medical in Yale, Washington. Please visit our website at ammedicalmd.com. Follow us and like us on Facebook and follow our YouTube channel. There is more coming in the future of medicine and we look forward to serving you. Thank you.